Beyonce is back with the second installment of her Renaissance trilogy. The trilogy officially started in 2022 once she released the exuberant Renaissance album, an eclectic mix of dance music that generally went over well, and produced not only some of the most interesting work of Beyonce's career, but also some of her best. There were ringings of Beyonce's second act in this trilogy, potentially exploring country music, before it was confirmed. And inevitably, we got confirmation once she released Texas Hold'em and 16 Carriages, which brought on a lot of critics and questioning of Beyonce's presence in country music. Texas Hold'em is a pretty safe stomp clap country pop number that also brings upon thoughts of the Lumineers' work, while 16 Carriages is a slow build, intimate ballad. Beyonce still approaches country in a very Beyonce and poppy way, and I think the questioning of her authenticity as it pertains to country music and if she should be even taken into consideration, is nothing more than racial optics. Artists like Florida Georgia Line, Morgan Wallen, and Zach Bryan have been able to incorporate popular sounds, hip hop sounds, and rock sounds and still be accepted and taken into consideration on country radio and country playlisting. For example, Morgan Wallen's Thinking About Me has more in common with the Maroon 5 single sonically than it does anything country, yet it was able to ascend on country radio. Same can be said for his mammoth hit Last Night. Florida Georgia Line has been able to incorporate many contemporary hip-hop and pop sounds into their music. I can't imagine they would have been told that they weren't country enough if they sung Old Town Road, for example. And we also have people like Sam Hunt and Casey Musgraves who bend genres often. Modern country as a genre has embraced so many styles and aesthetics, yet it's so resistant to accept that from people who don't have a lot of visual representation in the genre. The biggest selling country album of all time in the US is by a Canadian woman. One of country's biggest icons of the past decade is from Australia. Country is a genre that notoriously has southern US roots. One of the biggest country stars of the past decade, and subsequently of all time, Taylor Swift, had an exaggerated twang for the majority of her early career. Most country singers today have a forced twang and are not and have never been the blue collar workers and rednecks they portray themselves to be. Yet for some people, a woman from Houston, Texas, who by the way does have a natural southern twang in her voice, exploring country, is where they draw the line and have their meltdowns. Now there is a conversation to be had about country purists in general, and how many of country's genre-bending stars like Shania Twain, for example, experienced backlash and got told she wasn't country enough as well. But the conversation surrounding Beyonce even transcends the whiny country purist, and some people just saying she shouldn't touch the genre at all or isn't worthy enough. Now obviously the enjoyment and quality of the music is relative to the audience and listener, and if Beyonce's approach of country music is something that aligns with what you like. But I don't subscribe to the idea that Beyonce should be shut out because people claim she's not country enough, she doesn't know anything about country, she's not this, she's not that, when most of the same criticism isn't aimed at most country stars today, who more or less share more in common with Beyonce's approach to genre bending than a lot of conservative country media would like to admit. It just seems like dog whistles for a more nefarious problem, which is race. The album was in part inspired by her treatment at the CMAs, where she performed her song Daddy Lessons with the Chicks, and had a lot of people mad at her for her simply being on stage, and she was also the victim of racist comments due to the performance. Daddy Lessons was ultimately rejected from country categories by the Recording Academy as well, which leads us to now. In order to get ahead of expectations leading up to the album, Beyonce boldly declared that this ain't a country album, this is a Beyonce album, signifying that she at the very least would likely uphold what has become her signature fusions and genre hopping methods. So in that sense, it is not a country album. It is a Beyonce album that has some country pop and country R&B, amongst other genres, while also attributing the influence Black America had on country's origins. While some might expect a sense of quaintness given that it toys with country music, the album certainly never loses the grandiosity and Beyonce-ness of it all. I think a good example of that is the Jolene cover, Dolly Parton approved, which has been a hot talking point. It's a reimagined version where Beyonce threatens to fight Jolene and then joins in unison with her man who proclaims his loyalty to Beyonce, a stark contrast to Dolly Parton's original shameless pleading with Jolene. Beyonce's take inevitably caught some flack for its so-called anti-feminist lyrics, as if Jolene herself is someone Beyonce actually knows. It reads more like a movie script than a genuine story for Beyonce, where she's just playing the part. 
Ultimately, I can never imagine Beyonce begging a woman to not take her man. So that aspect sticks true to who B is as an artist. But even with Beyonce's original spin on Jolene, it's just not enough to overtake Dolly Parton's original Stone Cold classic. It's one of those songs that are simply too perfect for it to ever be outdone. Jolene isn't the only classic that Beyonce reimagines. There's a cover of the Beatles' Blackbird. Blackbird was written by Lennon and McCartney about Black American struggles. Beyonce ties the message in by featuring a handful of unsung Black female country singers. Unfortunately, it sounds like they were tagged on at the end and aren't given much integration or airtime on the song. Nonetheless, it can't be denied the amount of visibility that will come their way just by being able to be on the song. Beyonce excels elsewhere on the record, like on the sonic experience of an opener, American Requiem, which reads more like a statement piece where Beyonce goes off on her detractors. Used to say I spoke to country, and the rejection came. Said I wasn't country enough, said I wouldn't settle up, but if that ain't country, tell me what is. Sixteen Carriages tackles Beyonce's rise to stardom and endless work life. It's a slow burner and not exactly hook Latin, but one of those songs that I find to be more engaging within the context of the album. Protector featuring her daughter Rumi is a sweet tribute to motherhood. Bodyguard, however, is the immediate standout to me and probably the most instantaneously sticky song on the album. It's 70s soft rock pastiche and lyrically it's a pretty typical Beyonce love song, but it all works so well and naturally. The three most attention-grabbing duets are lined up one after the other in the track list. One features Willie Jones, a rising country star, on a song called Just For Fun, and it's beautiful, lush, and everything you could want from an acoustic ballad. While the Miley Cyrus collab, Too Most Wanted, is probably the most stirring duet, not only because it's two powerhouses collaborating, but also because it is genuinely good, and Beyonce and Miley's voices complement each other exceptionally well. You would expect the most wanted title to allude to their life of fame and celebrity, but it's a love song. Sung so well you might believe Beyonce and Miley were the ones married. The Post Malone collab is by far my least favorite of the duet run, and one of my least favorites on the album. Towards the end of the album, Beyonce tags along some of her more sonically explorative songs, such as Riverdance, Two Hands to Heaven, and Sweet Honey Buckin. They all seem as if they are at the very least attempting to squeeze some of the renaissance juice onto this album. And on Yaya, Sasha Fierce makes an appearance. It sounds like Beyonce circa Sasha Fierce and B-Day era. Country pioneer and legend Linda Martell also makes multiple appearances on the album. I will say I think this album is a bit too long and I don't find consistent enjoyment in all of the 27 tracks. It's not as cohesive as a project like Renaissance, but it's perhaps way more alluring. Cowboy Carter is a bit mixed, but with that being said, there's still plenty to enjoy here, and it ranks amongst one of Beyonce's most daring efforts. Beyonce's explorations of different sounds, styles, and ideas at this stage of her career is nothing less than admirable and impressive.